Hello, everybody, and welcome to Of Mind and Metal, a podcast where we talk about guns, lifting, brass playing, musicianship, and just life overall. Uh, and I'm Ben Grief, and I am joined by my co host, we are both co hosts, Nick Liebel. What's up? All right. From the art of war, Sun Tzu. Plan for what is difficult while it is easy. Do what is great while it, while it is small. The most difficult things in the world must be done while they are still easy. The greatest things in the world must be done while they are still small. For this reason, sages never do what is great, and this is why they can achieve that greatness. I thought that was a good, a good um, excerpt to start with. Um, as we're starting something new, um, because, you know, when, when you start a new skill, um, I'm starting a new job, um, you're going to be student teaching, you know, we're going to be doing new stuff and, um, you know, you're getting into strongman, I'm getting into jujitsu and it's really easy to think, man, like I'll never reach the finish line or I'll, man, I'm so far away from being good. And, um, it's so easy to fall into that. And I think what I love about going back to that is how, um, it just reminds me that just focus on the really small stuff because it all adds up. And if you can do really well at the, at the really baseline stuff, um, it's never, it's never going to really get that hard because it's always going to be easy if you're doing, if you're taking care of what you need to, to take care of, you know? Um, so so yeah, I'll throw it back, Absolutely. throw it over to you. Yeah, that I'm reminded of that quite often. And even in the things that I like, not just in the new things, uh, but like even in the old things. So like lifting, you know, if like if I'm wanting to get fast to like, you know, settle into a weight that I want to make bigger later, then, you know, you got to do this amount of weight. And, you know, you've got to make it like really, you know, consistent looking and really clean and make sure you're not, you know, screwing up your form. And, and, you know, that also translates into the practice room. I mean, I was just thinking about it a little bit earlier today um, when I was warming up, like, you know, this, the warm up is what leads us into, you know, playing later in the day. And if we do, you know, these fundamental things really well, even though they can like sometimes seem boring, you know, one, it's our job to make them not boring and like engage with them and two um you know it's a building block and so if the building block is really really steady and really nice then eventually you'll build a base and then from that base you can build on top of it and you'll be solid yeah and you know um the other day i was um i was teaching teaching a section and and we we're just doing quarter notes, you know, we we're doing really easy stuff and it just wasn't, it wasn't very locked in. And, um, I think it's really easy sometimes, like exactly what you're saying, when it seems so boring and it seems so simple to just not think about it. But, um, but if we can really make those foundational and if you can really focus on those, then, um, I mean, how often, um, you know, in my experience, whenever, like, I'm always better sometimes. I used to be really good at doing the hard stuff when I'd play, like when I'd perform or something. I'd be really good at really hard stuff and, um, and like, the hardest passage. And then when a teacher of mine or I'd get feedback, it'd be like, yeah, but, but this little thing was out of time. You know what I mean? Or it's like, you know, we're the master at getting things that look really cool and and um and whatnot but if we put that same energy into doing the simple things um you know it's going to end up paying off for you so yeah. but um i just think you know that's that's like with everything you know like little tiny things that you're that you're trying to do like with discipline like i've been um i don't know it's been weird i've been doing this cold shower thing for about two months now and i've been yeah. fasting on fridays and I didn't really put a lot of pressure on myself, especially for the fasting. I didn't say I need to do 24, 48, 72 hours. I just said, I'm just going to miss at least one meal on Fridays. And it was just really easy. And I kind of like, it was almost like, you know, I'm just kind of putting my foot into the door a little bit. 
so the door is just lodged open yeah. and so it but i'm since i'm building that really easy habit now it's like every friday like i know i'm gonna do it and it's really normal and i've actually noticed like at other times when i'm hungry i'm just like like suck it up like you can go <laughs> you can go 48 without eating like you can go five right now you know yeah. or something so but those little tiny habits like it's almost like we're just planting little tiny seeds um and then it, they just get easier but i think the other thing that um you know if we're going to take it away from war and stuff is is that those little tiny things are going to turn into little habits yep. and if you can do the easy thing um, and the, and, and almost, it's almost not doing what's easy, but it's like doing the thing that's really easy not to do, you know? Yes. Yeah. Like it's, it's like, sometimes it's really easy to play with the metronome, but it's easier to not play with it, mm. you know, or, yeah. or, or it's easy, you know, when you go to the gym, it's like, you just like want to start like throwing <laughs> on and, um, the <laughs> beep that out and, um, <laughs> and, and, it, and it's really easy to just it's easier to not do a weight that you know that you can dominate and that you can do fast um, or whatnot. So, uh, you know, just in my thinking, whenever I want to try to do a skill, it's, it's always, sometimes it's, it's not what's easy to do. It's, it's, it's fighting the thing that's easiest not to do. Yeah. So. And, and to add to the, the point you were making before that, just, you know, getting your foot in the door a little bit. Um, I listen to a lot of like podcasts in general. So, and especially when I'm mowing the grass and a couple weeks ago, I was listening to um, Jordan Peterson right now is doing a lecture or at least his daughter is releasing his lectures from his biblical series of the old Testament. Mm -hmm. And he was referencing his book that is out already. It's 12 rules, um, 12 rules for life by Jordan Peterson. Um, and he was talking about, you know, to build a successful life or to, to change a habit or to, to accomplish something new, like move towards a new goal. Um, you just got to take it one step. Like you can't say like, he, he even mentioned the, the gym in this because he was, you know, this scrawny dude that, you know, wanted to lift weights and he didn't, you know, load 315 on the bench and then just get under it. Like he had to start small and like just a little bit each time he had to start small you know, eat some good stuff. Um, and then from there, like eventually his weights increased. And so I, I, I totally, I'm on board with you there. Mm -hmm. Did my screen go up for a minute? It did, but that's okay. My mom was calling me. So <laughs> <laughs> tell her to bug off. That's still important. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, well, Ben, why don't, why don't you lead us into what's been going on with you, what you've been thinking about. Um, you had that strongman thing, and you had that lesson, so I'm excited to hear. Yeah, um, so yeah. I'll, I'll start with the strongman just because it's it's a little less packed than my trombone lesson was. Um, so this last Saturday, I went to my first strongman competition before, and I, I didn't participate. I just watched. Um but I just started like getting into strongman and like figuring out ways to, you know, include some strongman implements into my training, like that I was doing. So during the quarantine, you know, it was hard. It's been hard on everybody, you know, cause the gym shut down for a time. And, you know, if you're in a place that's like highly populated, um, you know, maybe your gym is still shut down. I know the guy in New Jersey, there's a guy in New Jersey that got his gym like completely like taken away from him, even though he was taking all the safety precautions down in my opinion but anyways um i built like my own squat rack and i built my own sled and i later i disassembled the squat rack and made farmer handles out of it um and then i got this old this old military rucksack and just put a crap ton of sand in there uh and it's about 150 pounds right now but i just like take all those things and move them across the yard and so that's kind of like my strongman stuff that i do so I went this Saturday to check it out and like those people get after it. Like they're giants, like both men and women are like, they're monsters in there. And I saw like the most weight ever pulled, like in, like in my life, like not on TV. Cause like you can watch Brian Shaw and Eddie Hall, like, you know, throw down, but 
like to see strong men in real life like the max lift there was it was like an 18 inch deadlift and someone pulled uh 1014 it was either 1014 or 1102 uh but it was it was massive so um i got in contact with my dad has a coworker at um at his work um and his stepdaughter has like six uh state records for the state of kansas um and she trains at that gym and the gym is awesome they've got they've got strong man implements they've got stones they've got um kegs uh sandbags everything a strong man might need and um and tires and so i was talking to her and you know she was like yeah well like it's a great gym and like here's the monthly and like i'm actually a trainer so like if you wanted like me to train you for a little bit like we could do that and i'll set you up a plan and everything we'll get together and you know talk about the plan and it sounds awesome uh i'm definitely definitely looking into it um i think i'm gonna start it up here next week um just because i'm waiting for my paycheck to hit on friday um but it was so cool to just see the guys in there and and the ladies in there just pulling some crazy weight um so that was really cool and then on I believe it was Thursday. I had my first trombone lesson in like three months. Um, and it was really good. There's a, there's a, a player around here in the Wichita area who teaches at a middle school. His name's Jeff Luttrell. One of the best trombonists in, in the state, uh, if not the Midwest. Um, but I, I had been kind of not very, uh, I don't know what's the word. I wasn't getting after it as much uh, to like seek knowing him very much. Um, in the last couple of months, we like my family and them have gotten a little closer. Uh, and so I was like, I need to hear good trombone played live, and I just need like live music like, in my life to inspire me some. Because I was struggling with some some inspiration for music, and um, I just I just needed to hear it. So we have our lesson and it starts off by, you know, we're, we're talking for a while and we talked for like 30 minutes before, before the lesson. And he was like, okay, so like, what do you want to do? And I was like, well, I'm playing the ways and concerto. And um, so if you wouldn't mind like giving some critique, that'd be really cool. Um, and he's like, okay. And then before we even started playing, he was like, so what's your like, what's your end goal? And I was like, I want to be a professional musician. And he was like, okay, well, what is that? What does that mean to you? And I was like, well, um, you know, I play gigs and teach lessons and, you know, not necessarily like a specific gig, but I, I would play any gig pretty much for the most part. Um, just so long as I get to play and it'd be nice to get paid for it as well. Uh, so he was like, okay, that's, that's definitely like one of many interpretations of what it means to be a professional musician. I was like, okay, that's cool. And then I, then I kind of went a little deeper. I was like, but you know, like during these last three months uh, and seeing the way the country's going and the way the world is today, I'm just struggling to find like why music is important or why, why should I, why should I put my lips on this metal tube and like blow notes out of it and why should i play this piece of why does this always in concerto matter at all like why does that matter so um he kind of looked at me and then he was like well uh if you think back to like throughout all of history like think about alexander the great well like what is alexander the great known for he's known for conquering all this land at like a and he was also a young guy so that's um, one of the reasons he's known, but he conquered so much land, um, including like the land of Greece. And um, he was like, so what's, what's most memorable about Alexander the Great? And I was like, uh, is it his, his men? He was like, okay, okay, let's, let's go with this, his men. So his men are still important today. And the swords they fought with and the armor they wore are still important today. And I was like, no, not really, no. He was like, you know, Alexander the Great conquered 
the land of Greece in particular. But what survived out of all of that happening? Like, uh, the city. Yeah, yes, the city did survive, but but more importantly, the arts survived. You know, philosophy, math, science, and music, poetry, um, and and drama. So I was like, wow, that to me is like really profound. And he was like, it's an entire culture that was saved. And then, you know, a, as time went on, you know, and Western music became uh, more, uh, not relevant, but it became more, increasingly more so uh, Western and then it, music making its way over to, you know, the Americas and just music now is like this whole interconnected web because everyone has kind of been around and with the way technology works, you know, anyone can access anything. Um, but despite all the, you know, any conquering that happened anywhere um, or whatever hard times, there was always music, like music has survived and not just the music, but the culture. So like, um, like a Greece is still a land today, you know, everyone's got a culture and everyone like knows of like what the old culture was like and how it's kind of changed into now. Um, but it's the culture that survived. And to me, what I, what I pulled out of that was that, you know, this is just my vehicle. Like playing this solo is the vehicle in which this cult, like my culture and like the culture I'm surrounded in matters. And it's what I have to offer to the table. So it's a way of like cultivating the culture. So I, I've been given a gift to play music and um, I particularly prefer and, and enjoy solo playing. Um, and with that, it's my job to cultivate that culture. Now I think, and I think that's a really loaded subject because I think that can go into any department, like it, not just music, but in anyone's field of expertise. Um, but it's just that music is my vehicle for it. Whatever I do, um, like you and I and everyone else has the opportunity to influence the culture. And, you know, if you, if you're brought up in, you know, good and true things, you know, there's so much crap in the world that if we like bring forth good things to this culture, then I don't know. I think there'd be a shift. I think there'd be a huge shift if everyone brought forth like the best that they had to offer. I'm not saying that people don't do that already, but um, it seems like there's a shortage of it right now in particular. Uh, but I don't know. It was, it was very impactful to me that uh, it's my job to shape the culture that and my immediate sphere of influence, you know? So I thought that was, that was huge. Yeah, you know, and um, you're kind of touching on things that I'm even going to share, like that, that I was bringing in. But um, something I've been thinking about lately is, like, when you wake up in the morning, are you thinking about, like, is your mindset, like, this could be, like, the best day of my life or something? Like, could this be the beginning of the best day of my life? And when you're talking about, like, people – there's a lot of crap in the world. I think that there's a lot of reacting to things that are going on and there's not a lot of, um, you know, I'm waking up and, and I'm thinking about how, how this day could go really well or how I can impact people positively or I can have, um, or I can, I can, you know, it just affects the way that you go into and everything. It, it affects the way that you go into conversations you have with people. Yep. It goes into um, just kind of like your general like state of mind, like how anxious you are, like how how calm you are. If you believe that like good, like this is going to be a good day, and um, because you know, I, I think that a lot of times when when we're practicing or you're doing something um, that you do as a routine, it's really easy to, to kind of let the routine take over 
and and you kind of lose um you like lose your your focus on it like you kind of let the you let the habit take over which is fine yeah in in some cases um but i think that you know 80 80 percent of like what we do during the day is a habit you know like we don't have that much mind power to affect every single thing that we do like psychologically like we don't have the cape like we're we're a being that operates based off of like like habits like things that we do like i wake up in the morning and this is what i do or you know blah 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 but habits are much more complex than that like it's the way that you react to things it's it's how emotionally invested you get in when you read things that set you off and and so I think that when you wake up and you kind of just set the tone for your day, it's almost like what um, what that what what he was talking about with like the vision, like where do you want like what is a, a what is a professional musician like what does that mean to you? Well, what does today mean to you? And how can we maximize what we're doing today to um, to like to get to get a little bit better as a as a person to cook, to max ourselves out a little bit more. To, to contribute to our culture and um, and something that that I've been vamping on um, I had a awesome talk the other night with Ralph Brody Brodicius Maximus he's a um, the band director in Arkansas and he whenever I talk to him I always leave really inspired because he always he talks about music like it's a person and and every day something he 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 does that I that I've been trying to do is he's he his goal one of his goals every day is to listen to something beautiful and um and I mean because if you're exposing yourself to beautiful things and you're listening to it like that's a diet um that it's gonna help I mean it's gonna it's gonna change you a little bit a lot whatever how whatever your dosage is but what but he talks about music as like a, a a person and you have a relationship with this person you know and and how, like how much focused time do you spend like caring for that um caring for that person and you know i think that um whenever i'm struggling with with a musical motivation i just think that a lot of times it's because i feel like i have to practice for something or whatever yes. and it's like <clears throat> no like i don't have to you know, like, but I, I enjoy, you know, you know, just, I enjoy the process of like exploring like this part of, um, of like, I don't know, my creativity, like you said, this gift that we have. Yeah. And, um, but when I start to think about it as a person in a relationship, it kind of changes it a little bit because it makes it less like, what do I need to do? And it's, how can I experience this better? How can I create an experience so that somebody else can have an experience with this as well? And, and it kind of just changes the whole paradigm from you and your trombone to, well, how is what you're doing right now going to help strengthen your relationship, which is going to bring, bring that to somebody else. Yeah. And so, um, that's good. So, yeah, I, I dig that. I, you know, it reminds me of something that I've been, I've thought about and, I'm co I'm going to quote myself because I was writing about this and like, I, I wrote like a little vignette um, for like when I don't want to practice. I actually wrote three. Uh, one of them was like when I don't want to practice and one was like when I don't want to go to the gym. And in the one I wrote uh, about when I don't want to practice, I when you think about it, music is like the lifeblood of human morale in a way. Or if, if it's not the lifeblood, it's one of like the main ingredients. Um, and I think that because like people that are, I, I can only speak for myself and I would assume you as well, but like when you hear something, like if you're listening to Star Wars, you're like, oh man, like this is so cool. Or like if you listen <clears throat> to the Lord of the Rings soundtrack or you're in the gym and you hear like I'm on a Marth or something like that or or you're listening and you're you're listening to yo-yo ma just like walking around like it's so inspiring you know and it's like 
music is such a great thing that where we can like sit there and analyze it and like in multiple ways like the the theoretical sense and also in the emotional sense which is the one i prefer to dig into because i i love like dealing with the emotional side of music but like it's so great a gift that like we should be able to share it like and i i totally agree with you thinking that like or with um what was his name your band director buddy oh it was ralph brody i i agree in the sense that that music is a person and like you have to I don't know because like if you're not inspired then like you're not going to want to do anything with it you know and that's what i've been feeling this past like you know quarantine's been hard for me musically um and i've, I've pursued some other interests which like is fine and like that has ultimately like led into trombone but um i mean i've been getting back into jazz a little bit right now just because it's like i love listening to jazz and i love the way jazz uh makes me feel and like i'm like a terrible jazz player but you know it's fun to like figure it out you know like and like get my foot in the door a little bit you know like all right here's the third and the seventh we're just gonna play you know whatever is a half step like in each chord progression like going along the piece and you know now let's only use eighth notes in this like i'm gonna improv but i'm only gonna use you know quarter notes and i'm only gonna use these three notes or whatever so it's just a matter of you know being inspired again and that's why i think it's ridiculous sometimes uh like the the stigma between like the classical and the jazz musician in college or whatever i don't know if it was like this in <laughs> at all um but I, think I feel it's like maybe not even just university in general everyone like every kid feels like they need to be strictly classical or strictly jazz but i think you should just do what you love like and just play music because music is music is music you know yeah you know i think i just don't think a lot of people like music as much as they think they do um mm. or you know because it's like i don't believe sometimes when you listen to someone play something it's like you're either deaf or you just um or you don't like music as much as you do because like if, if music meant something to you and if it was important to you, and if you really had a relationship with it, you'd never let that thing out of the practice room, you know? Yeah. And so, um, but I mean, that's common everywhere, but that's common with everybody, you know, with like everything. Um, people, you know, a lot of people, it's easy to, um, you know, everybody wants to be the beast, but no one wants to do what the beasts do. Yeah. And, um, and I, I agree. I think that a lot of things get over stigmatized and, and people, you know, as human beings, we just like to be in camps. Like, we just like to be on, we like to take sides. It's, it's fun to do that for some reason. Like, it's fun to just, to, to, to load up on a side and just, like, attack something else. Yeah. But I think that when it comes to something like music, which is so creative and it's so personal, I think it really destroy. you know, it kind of destroys the art because or or it, it can it can corrupt someone from experiencing the art i don't think it destroys the art yeah but um the art transcends but uh but i yeah i just don't think a lot of um you know i mean in order to to develop like a, as a as a musician like that's a very individual thing that's a personal thing like your sound and 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 your tone and your musicianship the way you phrase things is a result of like what you consume and no amount of time in a practice room just smashing your head against a wall, playing it the right way is, is going to be, um, you know, it, it's going to make like good music, you know? I mean, it might sound right, but it's not going to convince anybody of anything. Right. It's kind of like being like a good person. Like if you're just doing the right things, but people can see right through you and they don't think that it's genuine or coming from a real place of like concern, um, it's just going to appear fake. And I think that, um, it's easy to get caught into, I'm just going to play it, you know, the right rhythm in the right time. And I'm going to like play with a good sound and, um, and we just forget about like what, um, what music, like, like why we write music, like what, what you're saying, why composers write music, it's to convey something. Yeah. It's to, um, it's because they have a fascination with a melody or an idea, or they have a feeling or, or maybe they're in like a huge emotion, you know, maybe it's not specific or they're telling a story. Yeah. And I think that 
part of the journey that you have to go on as a musician is you kind of have to go through this roller coaster of like figuring out like what like what speaks to you and and if you don't understand what speaks to you you're not gonna be able to sell it to anybody else like if you don't believe in what you're playing or what you're doing nobody else is gonna believe you like and like no one's gonna buy it you know and that's I don't know I try to think about that with everything that I do like would, would I buy this like my gym like when I'm in the gym I pretend it's like a training montage you know and yeah. and it's like do I look like like am I am I getting after it like am I am I am I doing things the right way um you know if the answer is no then then I'm I'm letting myself down if I play something and it sounds like garbage and I'm like you know what that's you know whatever like then no one else is gonna buy it it's like in the office you know when Joe from Saber is there and Michael wants to let everybody go on St. Patrick's Day yeah and and he goes in there and she's just like well if you feel like you've put in a hard day's you know hard day's work then then you can you can you can go but I don't think a lot of people you know it seems like you know that's a that's a tough question to ask yourself um you know did you did you do your best today you know and you know just to make things go back to full circle that starts with that waking up in the morning yep. like and just just having having the motivation to say you know what i'm gonna make something of today because how many people wake up and they're just like i'm tired and it's like i'm not trying to be a <laughs> but you're just but you're letting yourself but i mean we only are gonna live for so many days and then we're gonna die and then the ride's over the show's yeah. closed you know like you miss the train and and it's like like why would you waste time think even if you are like why wouldn't you try everything in your power to 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 correct to, to recalibrate so that at least tomorrow you're in a better place but yeah. you know we we live the same people with the same day all year and it's like man i don't want to live the same day i want to you know we and i don't know man it's a it's a yeah. freaking adventure but you gotta be you gotta be ready to you gotta be ready to get on board man chugga chugga choo choo <laughs> yes and i you mentioned something about like earlier about like distracting from the art we i know you just went like five different places and i could totally go down five different holes just there but i wanted to go back uh to the <laughs> to the music side of things where you know, if we get lost in one thing or entrenched and encamped in one place, then we can't really go anywhere else. And I'll just share that, like, that has happened to me musically. And that's one of the things, like, the best things I learned at the end of undergrad. And I just was reminded of it again in this lesson. Like, um, Mr. Lutro, like, is such a fine musician and artist. And that's what I think we really miss. Uh, Sometimes, I mean, depending on your, like, if you have a great teacher that talks about it, good on you. But sometimes, you know, maybe we miss it for ourselves. And that's what, you know, maybe teachers are trying to get across. Uh, but I noticed particularly, like, I don't know about tuba, but for trombone, especially, we all get stuck in this trombone world, where it's like, oh, well, I heard, you know, Denson Paul Pollard play it this way. So I'm going to play it this way. And I'm, I'm totally guilty of this. Stefan Schultz is my favorite bass trombone player of all time, like one of the top three to five. And I, when I see a piece that he's played, I'm like, okay, I want to do it like this because he does it so beautifully. And that's fine, but you're kind of, I think while that is good, you're kind of shortchanging yourself because A, there's like the composer's intent. So it's at least, you know, worthy to know like, what did they mean when they were writing this and like, why did they write this? You know, what does this spot and this spot mean? And then two, like, what do you think about it? Cause you're the artist, you're the one who has to convey the message. So like, what do you think about it? Uh, not in terms of trombone. Now this is the part where we get stuck, at least as trombone players, I think, is that we are not listening to enough of other people because the number one most natural instrument and like the, like the original instrument is the human voice. So if you're not listening to, you know, human voice, then it's, it's really hard. Like all you have in your head is a trombone picture and it's good to have a trombone picture like for your concept of sound, but like, what about your concept of music? You know, like who are you listening to, um, to open your like musical eyes and not just your like trombone or your sound eyes, like, <clears throat> or even great violin players, like, 
you know, there's there's great players out there, violin, cello, and voice, I think are like the best people to listen to because they make it like the most like singingly. Like if you were to look at a piece of of um sheet music and then listen to like a pro violin player and you were to compare their like performance to the markings on the page, it would not be the same. It'd be the right notes and everything. And it'd be similar like contrasts written in. But they're doing their own thing because that's what they've decided to do <clears throat> as like the musician's intent. And I think I think that's great. And I don't think we do that enough. Like I certainly don't even do that enough. And I you know I'm learning about it and trying to do better at it. Um but for a long time, you know, um I was stuck in like just this, you know, like trombone thing. Like don't think and like Nick, you've helped me out and like you've crashed into my practice room and like helped me out and be like you know what, maybe, maybe think of it like this way or like in the Vaughn Williams, you know, like, like don't, don't play it like a tuba stick or don't play it like a tuba player would like play it like a, you know, someone singing like the second movement, like make up words to it, you know, and just like sing it like, like you really mean it or like someone really means this, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You know, I think the word you're looking for is ghetto, like a trombone ghetto. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, That's like exactly we talked is. Well, we talk about that with band directors, too. You know, there's, like, a band director ghetto where all people want to talk about is, like, administration and what plume you're going to do and gauntlets. And it's, like, that like people, you know, it's easy to not talk about music. Um, it's yeah. easy to get distracted with all the other stuff. But, you know, I think you're right. And, you know, I don't even think you have to go that deep into, I mean, like, obviously, yeah, I mean, violin players and um, and singers, of course, but I think that, I mean, if you just wrote down, go on the radio and listen to a pop song, listen to the song that's like number one, yeah. and then write that out. And then pl just play that rhythm and those notes exactly. And you'll realize that like that sounds nothing like the song. You know what I mean? Like the singer's singing it, you know, so differently or something. Yeah. And, um, and so we don't even have to look that far. But you're totally right. And, and I think, you know, you can take it a step further and Bernstein said, you know, the best way to study something is, is to study it through a different medium. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can, you can take your hobbies, you can take the things that you're interested in and those can teach you about life too. Cause that's what music is. I mean, music is about sound yep. and it's about expressing, it's about expressing the human experience. It's about just expressing like literally anything. Like it's not like, it doesn't have to be a certain thing. It's just like whoever you are, like whatever you feel like that's valid because since you qualify as a human, yeah, unless you're like a cyborg, like in Terminator. <laughs> um, but you know, um, but like, so I don't know. I think that a really, um, something that, that is, that's very important. I think to being a good musician is to make sure that like the rest of your human development is going on. Um, you know, I mean, I, I went through a phase where, you know, all I did was just practice all day and, um, and like, that's, that's good to a degree, but like, but so many, but some things are falling out of balance and I don't think that you should be 50, 50 balance. Like I'm, I'm sure as hell, like not 50, 50. I'm like, I got a very weird, you know, seesaw balance going on here, yeah. but, but you have to make sure that you're taking care of like your emotional health, your physical health, your whatever you believe spiritually, you know, like in the world, like you have to, you have to be like taking the time to like let your mind cool down, you know, like, and, and you have to develop as a human being because, um, you know, if you're not developing as a person, you're not going to develop as a musician because you're just going to be a really good technician and the world doesn't need another one of those. Um, they need whatever you have to offer, you know, and yeah. so, um, and it's so hard with the state of auditions and how competitive things are, but, you know, uh, my, one of my most influential teachers, Doc, always told me, you know, Nick, there's always room at the top, and so if you're you, and you're doing you, and, and, and you're just, you're staying true to that, like, you know, there's always room if you're at the top of, of what you're doing or if you're, you're at your best, you know, you'll make yourself into demand. And so, 
I mean, that's what Arnold did with bodybuilding. I mean, that's why the eighties are filled with testosterone and steroids and yep. <laughs> Arnold and Stallone and Jesse right. Ventura and Van Dam. you know, like that's, he's the one that brought it when he did Conan, you know, and, and yeah. so, um, yeah, I think that, oh, sorry. yeah, I think you, yeah, you hit on something good there. And, you know, to add to that, like the, like, yes, practicing is important and especially smart practicing, but, uh, Nolan actually sent me a quote or told me about a quote, uh, this last semester and I can't remember who it was by, but it went along the lines of, you know, if you're practicing more than like three hours a day, then you're missing out on life. And, mm -hmm. you know, like, if you think about that, it's like, well, you've got three hours to do the best job you can to like accomplish things. And then, you know, playing and practicing is just as important as, you know, your face off the horn. I was talking in, in my lesson again, um, you know, and I think other orchestral musicians would agree with this or, you know, or any musician who does gigs would agree that like, between someone who's like kind of a jerk and is a better player, but there's someone who's like a nice guy or a nice gal and can play, but not necessarily up to the exact same level as the first person, they're going to take the nice guy every time because that's the person that, you know, is most enjoyable to sit next to. So yeah, I agree. It's totally important to like practice, but also you've got to, you've got to balance it out with the other side of the coin, you know? Yeah. And, and, you know, I try to like even rename things. So like when I'm practicing, like when I'm practicing, what other people would call practicing, it's really not like, I don't even think of it as practicing. Mm -hmm. Like I think about it as like exploring, you know, like I'm just, yeah, I'm, I'm just like, I'm just like, exp I'm building, I'm building a sound that, that I, that I have in my head. I'm just, I'm, I'm making progress towards a sound. I'm not yeah. practicing. And when I, you know, when I go to the gym, I'm not like working out. I'm just, I'm, I'm improving. I'm reprogramming my body to build back faster so that I can be stronger. Yeah. You know, when I go to jujitsu, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to learn techniques so that I can, so that I can execute them once I'm given an indicator faster and I'm trying to conceptualize different positions. Yeah. So but I think that people are like, I need to go practice. And it's like, well, you really don't need to go practice. You need to go just improve a little bit at, at whatever. And once you make that mental switch, that's like, it goes back to waking up. It's just like, it's how you go into the thought of something. It's how do you wake up in the morning? Well, how do you go into a practice session? Well, how do you go into a conversation with somebody? How do you log on to Facebook? Like, what's your mentality? Most people are just looking for a fight. And, and I think that, the most important thing with all this is we just aren't detached enough, mm. you know, yeah. and we're just not, and we're just not thinking straight because yeah. we're too compromised. I need to go practice. I need to go work out. I need to, well, I'm a classical person. I don't do jazz, blah, blah, blah. Like we're just too compromised emotionally with, with all of these things. And we're like this close to the ground can't see that we're, we're so close to the ground and we just gotta just get just get the truck out of dodge you know yes. like just, just, just <laughs> roll out calm down and 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 just like just see what needs to be done you know instead of saying whose fault it is or whatever just say what can i do right now to improve yeah and and then just do that you know but for some reason we just we don't take ownership and we're not detached so yeah, yeah. um but Zach Davis always called that Zach Davis, wonderful human, wonderful bass trombone player, told me my freshman year in our freshman fundamentals class that he didn't think of it so much as practicing, but get better time. Because if you think about if you think about it, it's like, well, I have to go practice, which means you have to spend time away from doing something that might be like not stimulating but fun to you. It takes time away from doing something that you were doing. But if you think about it as time to get better at something, that's a totally different, it's all, it's, you know, it's, it's detaching the way you look at it to look at it from a completely different angle. Well, and, and when we detach, what we really start to do 
is we start planning for what is difficult while it is easy because Damn. we're just we're we're taking we're taking we're saying this, this is something that i want in the future and so i'm gonna make a i'm gonna invest a little bit today i'm gonna plant seed i'm gonna go water the soil a little bit i'm gonna go cut down a tree so some sunlight can come onto this corn i'm going to take out the combine and do whatever combines do to <laughs> well maybe that's harvesting them. i'm not sure yeah but <laughs> you know like yeah. but that's but that's what's going on here is that we're like wh like that's essentially what we're talking about is is when we're doing things you just adjust that mindset and it also like to me it takes away the stress of it mm -hmm. like oh i gotta get something done no i just i'm just going to i'm gonna come in here i'm gonna do my best and i'm gonna get a little bit better today and and you know what getting better might mean getting getting your ass kicked like maybe you realize, man, I'm not good. I'm not as good as I thought I was, or yep, I suck just just as much as I thought I did, and I still need to get better. But you know, um, in from you know, in failures can help us, successes can help us. It's all just about how you're looking at it, and um, so adjust your adjust your optics. You know, right. get yeah. some get some new glasses on, and. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, man, what a loop! What a loop! We what got it. So, I think we should end it right there. That that seems dude, like a perfect. That's like take a fork in it. Yeah, on it. dude, bow it. Um, yeah. So, all right, Ben, why don't you take us out? All right. Uh, so this will be posted to our YouTube page, um, and I'll put a put a notification out on on the Insta on our uh, Instagram. Our Instagram is of Mind and Metal Podcast at of mind and metal podcast um yeah so we'll be out soon uh we'll be back in about a week week or two um but hope you guys enjoyed this uh i certainly did this is really good um so yeah thank you all for listening and uh see you next time over and out